All right, the first thing that we're gonna do is add a background. So I went with two paper tears in my background. I tried this paper tear first, didn't like the look, so I went with the one on the left. And then I duplicated it by hitting Command J. And then I put it on the right side to create a tear effect in the background. The next thing I did was add a paper tear across the middle, and then I added my subject. Once I did that, I went to Camera Raw Filter. So you go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and then you can adjust the sliders to whatever you would like. So for this one, I increased the texture all the way, and then I adjusted the clarity, as well as a couple of different uh, other ones that you can look at. And the next thing I did was just clean up the edge a little bit. So the uh, whenever I hit Select Subject, the application gave me a little bit of the background, so I just had to get rid of some of that small adjustment but it's pretty simple you can go to your paintbrush tool and with the layer mask selected you can just paint over those parts all right now i decided to add a picture of cal on the side and so i made a rectangle and then i created a clipping mask by hitting control and clicking on the layer and going down to create clip mask then i just fit it to that box and i made it black and white so I wanted to make it look like he was popping out of that square. So I decided to duplicate my picture of Coach Cal. And then I masked out that picture and made sure that the masked out image was on top of the image that was not masked out. So it looked like he was popping out of that square that I created. And then I used my marquee tool, which is the second tool to the left and a raster size the layer and then i got rid of the outside of that layer and then of course i made it black and white so that it was in the background um, and it wasn't one of my main things that people are going to look at when they look at this uh, particular graph all right after i did that i added a piece of tape to make it look like that black and white picture was taped onto the screen. And then I moved my original picture of Coach Cal to the top so that the main picture was not black and white. All right, the next thing I did was make sure that the top layer of Coach Cal was in full color and that the one on the right was in black and white. I did this so that the color one just pops out more. I don't want a dull image. And I'm gonna make the background that is black right now that you guys see, I'm gonna make it blue. So I wanted to make sure that there was a colorful image on top of that, just to draw the attention of whoever's viewing it to the main image, which is Coach Cal. I then just grouped my layers just to make sure everything was a little bit more organized as well as I hid that layer that is the plus signs. And I did that because I knew that it just wasn't gonna fit into whatever I was trying to do. And I didn't really like the look of it, to be completely honest. All right, the next thing I did here was just organize my graphics so I wanted to make sure everything was in a folder and I could find it easily and then I added some text here so I added the Kentucky basketball across the top as well as I took the color from the original Kentucky logo and I made it my background third step is just adding any type of text you want so I decided to do coach Cal's name as well as the opponent that they're playing so um, I did that and then I also added the circle graphic uh, with the letters Kentucky and I did that all around the right side here and then I did my Coach Cal versus North Carolina to the left side. So you can see me trying to line up a perfect circle here and this is pretty hard to do, pretty hard to eyeball, you're going to mess it up. So what I do recommend you doing is taking your eclipse tool, which is basically making a perfect circle 
and you're going to make a circle where you want to put your text. And then what you do is you adjust the curve and the text size according to that circle. So you can see me doing this here. I'm first trying to eyeball it, which I know wasn't going to work, but I just was kind of proving a point. And you can see me trying to line it up and it's pretty difficult. But once I make that perfect circle, I can see where I need to put my text and what the angle of the text needs to be. All right, the next part is just adding different overlays as well as different texts. The first thing I did was add a tape overlay and then I added a sticker on top of it to give it a shiny look and I added the words good luck over top. Pretty simple. Um, I included the PSD in the comments here so you, you can download the PSD and then you can take the stickers as well as the tape that I used off of the PSD file and you, can, and you can use it on whatever design that you're doing. So the next thing I did was add Coach Calipire's name and text and then versus North Carolina. And then I added a square in the background of that and a square underneath the text. So the square underneath the text has a purpose, it's not just random. What it does is it attracts the reader's eyes so the reader is going to look at the square first and then it's going to look at Coach Kyle Perry's name as one of the main things in this graphic. So I put a, uh, I put a specific and cool background onto that particular square and it's the, its purpose is to bring the reader's eyes to it. The next thing I did was add an overlay in order to give the blue a little bit of texture and that overlay is also gonna be in the PSD file and you guys can use that in your particular graphic. And then one of the last things I did was add more game day circles. So I did the same method, I put a circle down and then I just went all around the outside of that circle with the game day lettering and then I just lowered the opacity in order to uh, have that be one of the last things that the the reader looks at all right this next part is levels adjustments so it's pretty simple you got to go to your main subject and you have to adjust the levels on it so you're going to go to new adjustment layer hit levels and then you're going to switch it to screen and what screen does is make those bright colors on your subject more bright so if there's white on there it makes it more white and you can see me doing this on every little part of the subject. It takes a while, so don't get frustrated with it. And then I do it again with the levels on multiply. So I make a new adjustment layer and then I go to multiply. And then I go over all my dark parts of my picture. The fifth step in this is just add shadows. So I want to make sure it looks like he's actually standing on that blue. And so you can just take a black brush and you can change the perspective and then add a Gaussian blur by going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And what that does is it just basically blurs out that black dot you just created and it makes it look like a shadow. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you learned anything, please subscribe. I give away my PSD files as well as everything that I'm doing within these videos that take a while to do. So any like and comment, I really appreciate it. And I thank you guys for watching and have a good one.